Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll talk about what is sound, and I'll explain all aspects of sound. Defining sound is quite difficult for people who generally take it for granted. The vast majority of people are quite capable of hearing the vast majority of sound, but defining it is another step altogether. So what is sound, and how do humans process sound. So let's take a closer look at the science behind sound. It's actually a lot more complicated than you might realize. But before all that, I have a little contest going on starting in this video. The only thing you have to do is like, subscribe, and leave a comment. You can leave whatever comment you want. The prize is a Skype call with me asking me whatever questions you want about soundproofing. So I mean, some videos I have just a couple of comments. So when you think about it, if this is one of those videos, you might have a 50-50 chance of getting that prize. So let's define sound. Sound is a pressure wave created by objects that are vibrating. Whenever there is a vibration, air molecules move and a sound wave is created. It's a form of energy, just like light and electricity. Sound waves first travel through a medium and then to a human ear. What the ear process goes to the brain and results in what the sound sounds like for each individual. This is the simple definition, but a lot of components goes into each sound waves. And of course, I will talk more about that. So first, how do sound waves work? Well, sound waves might seem pretty complex, but it's just a chain reaction of air molecules. When an individual air molecule does get that initial push, it causes a chain reaction that moves the sound wave along. In the air, various sound waves are moving all the time. This mixes all the different sounds and tones and presents a person with what they hear at all times. Sound waves are very different in frequencies as the faster an object vibrates, the higher the frequency becomes. So how is sound made? Well, sound comes down to wavelength and, and amplitude. Wavelength is the distance between two different compressions when a sound wave is created. A sound wave that passes very fast is higher in frequency. All frequencies travel at the same speed if everything else is equal. Just a quick pause, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. And also feel free to leave a comment, I would love to hear your feedback, and also your questions that I would do my very best to answer. Thank you. Amplitude is designed as vibrations squeezed by air molecules. They are squeezed together very hard, or not so much. If an object must vibrate, it is going to produce a louder sound and a greater amplitude. Sound waves don't necessarily have to always have the same amplitude. The amplitude is half the height of a sound wave. Sound in its simplest form is energy, so it can transform into something else. For example, the energy from sound can convert into electrical energy. So what is the sound frequency of a sound wave? Well, to properly measure the frequency of sound waves, it is the number of back and forth vibrations of a particle per unit of time. One hertz equals one vibration per second, and the frequency of a wave equals one divided by time. So now a look at the sound scale. The most common way to measure sound is by using something that is not decibels as a common grading scale. Decibels are a ratio for comparing the intensity of two different sounds. The more intense the sound is compared to the other sound in the area, the louder it will be to a person. So let's break down some of the common sound levels in decibels. So let's say whispering. Whispering is 25 decibels around. Refrigerators are around 40 decibels. Conversations are around 52 to 60 decibels. A passing car can be between 80 and 90 decibels. A concert, 110 to 120. That's why it's always good to wear ear protection, even though most don't. Gunshot, 
140 decibels and a rocket launching into orbit 180 decibels as soon as the decibels gets above 100 extreme caution is needed to avoid overexposure if at all possible protecting the ears from these loud sounds will help to prevent any serious damage anything above 150 decibels could cause serious damage if only exposed to the sounds for a couple of seconds the eardrums simply can't withstand that type of sound for any length of time. The speed of sound. How fast does it travel? Well, the speed of sound is something that many refer to, but is challenging to specifically define because there are a few factors that goes into the speed of sound. The most common reference to the speed of sound is the air that is roughly 20 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit in temperature. When those conditions are outside and no other factors are playing a role, sound travels at about 343 meters per second. That means it takes 2.9 seconds to travel a kilometer and 4.7 seconds to travel a mile. Sound travels very slowly, relatively speaking. When it is in liquids, it travels a little faster and in solids, it travels the fastest. To compare, sound travels at about 4.5 times faster in water compared to air, and 15 times faster in a solid compared to air. This explains the reason why there is a delay between lightning and thunder, as one obvious example everyone can relate to. The speed of light is much faster than the speed of sound, so there will be a delay depending on how far the lightning strike occurred. By counting the amount of time between lightning strikes and thunder being heard, a person can guesstimate how far away they are. The perception of sound. We often view sound as how human perceives it at all time. Hearing is one of the five senses just about everyone can utilize, and how the ears react to sound is the best way to put it in a frame that makes sense. There are six ways in which sound waves are analyzed by most people. Each one plays a pretty important role, and understanding how they all work can make a pretty big difference. The first one is pitch. The pitch of a sound is another way of explaining how low or high sound is. It is usually qualified as a frequency and pitch is used a lot in music settings. It's also a way to define sounds that are at a pitch that humans might not be able to pick up with their ears, but other animals can. Which is why dog whistles, as an example, works perfectly. A dog picks up the pitch but it sounds like nothing to humans. To set a pitch standard, musicians will look at where instruments usually tune for a particular performance. This gives everyone a very defined pitch to base music off and is often used to judge how music sounds. Pitch isn't just limited to music, as every sound has a certain pitch. Random noise that is spread across evenly all the different frequencies are considered white noise which ends up being a pitch that most people don't think twice about. The next one is duration. The duration of a sound is how long nerves in the ear responds to what it hears. The easiest to define duration to the point when sound is first heard until the sound changes or stops completely. A sound might be heard for a long time, but it could change loudness, pitch, and more along the way. The next one is loudness. The more nerves stimulating in the ears, the louder an ear perceives the sound. A very loud sound will push on the basilar membrane and stimulate more nerves indicating to the ear and the brain that it is extremely loud. Humans can only take so much loudness before it does damage to the ear permanently. Not only will it do damage, but during the loudness, it is also very painful. That's why the common reaction is to cover the ears as much as possible and protect them at all costs. The next one is timber. This is the quality of different sounds that ears take in. This can be anything from the quality of a person's voice to how something sounds when it falls. Whenever a sound is heard, a person has a perceived thought on what it should sound like. When there is a high quality with a particular sound, it's when the sound processes everything just right. Musicians are always looking for the right level of timber. 
The next one is sonic texture. Many different sound sources go into sound. The best way to look at this is again through music, as texture allows for people to pick up the difference between unison, homophony, and polyphony. In a practical setting, sonic texture is how certain sound stands out in a crowded room. The ear perceives sound in a different way depending on what is standing out and what is also blending in. And finally, spatial location. Where a particular sound is coming from plays a huge role in how people hear things. When a person is listening for one thing, in particular in a very noisy room, the spatial location allows for that type of isolation and identification. Sound can come from the horizontal or vertical plane, and distance plays a huge role as well. So for a lot of people, understanding the specific about sound can be a little bit frustrating. It is true that for most people, they take the sound they hear constantly for granted. It does help to know a little more about what creates sound and why we hear what we do. Sound helps people stay safe, communications, enjoy life, and much more by understanding a little bit more of what sound is. At least knowing the different terms can allow people to talk about the topic a little smarter. Sound is everywhere, even when people believe that they are sitting in complete silence. Ambient noise is present at all time at some level. Thank you very much for watching, and like I said before, consider subscribing to our channel if you like this type of content. And also, don't forget to visit our website at soundproofguide.com. Thank you.